Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Radio Master TX16S radio controller. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and point out the differences between this new highly anticipated radio controller and the latest version of the Jumper T16 radio controller which I've been using for the last year or so. In terms of packaging, the Radio Master TX16S comes well protected inside a reusable storage box and inside along with the radio controller you can find the user manual a USB Type-C cable and a rubber keychain, which is a really nice, refreshing add-on. When getting the TX16S, you can choose between a couple of versions. The cheaper version comes with potentiometer gimbals and is available only in mode 2, which of course you can change by yourself to mode 1, and the more expensive version, which is the one I have, features whole sensor gimbals, a touchscreen which is not yet supported by the current OpenTX firmware, and is available both in mode 2 and mode 1. In addition, for an extra cost, this version is also available as a bundle with the TBS Crossfire Micro TX. In terms of features and specs, on the center of the TX16S you can find a 4.3 inch LCD screen with a resolution of 480 by 272 It supports 16 channels, so on its top side you can find two 3 position switches, a single 2 position switch and a momentary switch. On the top of its front side you can find four 3 position switches. On the center you can find two potentiometers and next to them a six position switch and on each side you can find a slider. On the center around the TX16S logo you can find a speaker grill. Over here you can find the power button. Next to it you can find a lanyard loop. And next to the gimbals you can find three buttons for channels 1 to 6. In addition on the top side covered by a rubber cover you can find a USB Type-C port which is used for connecting the TX16S to a computer in order to use it for flight simulators. Next to it you can find a trainer port and over here you can find a non-removable foldable antenna. On the bottom side, protected by a rubber cover as well, you can find another USB Type-C port which is used for internally charging the batteries of the TX16S. Next to it you can find a micro SD card slot and on the sides you can find two UART ports which are used for connecting external hardware and for flashing the firmware of compatible receivers. On the back of the radio controller you can find a standard gel model bay which you can use for connecting Crossfire, R9M and other compatible radio models. The bay is not exposed and the TX16S comes with a project box which you can use for creating custom do-it-yourself radio models and also for protecting the model bay when it is not in use. Under this sliding door you can find the battery compartment. Inside you can find a battery case that accommodates two 18650 lithium ion batteries which are not included. You can charge these batteries either internally inside the TX16S using the USB Type-C connector which is located on its bottom and if you'd like to charge them a little bit faster you can also charge them externally using an adapter using your regular LiPo battery charger. In addition as you can see the battery compartment is much bigger than the battery case so if you'd like you can use bigger cells or use other compatible 2S batteries. You probably already noticed that the Radio Master TX16S looks very much alike the Jumper T16 and that's because it was designed by the same guys who designed the T16 which at a certain point decided to part the way with Jumper and establish their own company. The major differences between these two step brothers are that the TX16S features a more robust scroll wheel which is less likely to break. As far as I can tell the screens of both radio controllers are identical but the more expensive version of the TX16S features a touch panel which is soon going to be supported by OpenTX 2.4. An extra page button has been added which makes the navigation process a little bit easier because now you don't have to long press the page button in order to go back. In addition the TX16S features two UART ports and the microSD card slot is located next to the charging port. This is actually better because disassembling the radio controller won't require you to remove the microSD card. According to RadioMaster, in order to comply with FCC regulation, the antenna of the TX16S is not removable, unlike the Jumper T16. The battery compartment of the TX16S is bigger than the T16, so it can accommodate bigger batteries. In terms of ergonomics, the TX16S features side rubber grips, so it's more comfortable to hold it. Unlike the Jumper T16, which is using ribbon cables in order to connect its internal components, which can lead to some issues, the TX16S is using normal ones. It's about 40 grams heavier than the T16. 
On the Jumper T16, you'll be able to adjust the tension of the gimbals simply by removing the back rubber covers, whereas the TX16S will require you to disassemble it. And finally, the TX16S is using 4mm gimbal threads, as opposed to the Jumper, which is using smaller 3mm ones. Before disassembling the TX16S, first I recommend to place it upside down inside its case in order to protect its gimbals, then disconnect the battery, remove these four Phillips screws, remove the side rubber covers, and finally remove these two 2.5mm hex screws from the top side of the radio controller. Then carefully remove its back cover, and the internal components of the TX16S will be revealed. Now you can adjust the tension of the springs of the gimbals by tightening or loosening these 1.5mm hex screws, and you can adjust the friction and the tension of the throttle axis by tightening or loosening these two Phillips screws. In addition, if you would like to convert your Mode 2 radio controller to Mode 1, you will need to move this metal part along with the spring to this position, and move this metal part along with the screws to the other side. As I mentioned before, all the internal components are connected using normal connectors, so changing a broken switch for example should be pretty easy, and also upgrading the gimbals to whole sensor ones and replacing the screen with the one with the touchscreen in case you've got the cheaper version. Now by the way, the foldable handle of the Jumper T16 is fully compatible with the TX16S, so if you'd like to obtain a slimmer profile, you can purchase it separately for a pretty good price, since now the Jumper T16 is being discontinued. And another way to obtain a slimmer profile without purchasing the foldable handle is to simply reverse the original handle and mount it in this position. So overall, as far as I can tell, Radio Master did an excellent job with the TX16S, and it's pretty remarkable that they can sell this high quality radio controller for a price of $130. As for the cheaper version, currently it goes for $20 less, and unless your budget is very tight, I don't recommend getting it, because in case in the future you would like to upgrade either the gimbals or the screen, it is going to cost you more than that. Now after replacing the stick ends with ones which are more friendly for pinchers and mounting the TBS Crossfire Lite module, I'm going to start using the TX16S, and hopefully soon I'm going to provide you with a more thorough feedback and help you to decide whether you want to get it, or maybe go for the Jumper T18, which I'm going to review soon. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.